that no man take my life, I give my life. He gave his life for me and for you that we could have life, life eternally. He gave his life that we could have relationship with his father. Oh, so such a blessing, saints, to know that, praise God, that we can stand upon the precious promises of God this morning. Hallelujah, our hope is in him. Faith is the sum of things hoped for. Hallelujah. We're standing upon the things that have been said to us. And we have to continue to have a firm grasp upon all that God is saying to us. Before we, we go any further, uh, I want to read some scripture, uh, opening scripture this morning. And it says in Psalms 95, it says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock, the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hill is his also. The sea is his. He made it and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hands. Today, if you hear his voice, praise God. We praise the Lord this morning for God being who he is. And we come this morning worshiping and praising him in our spirits. Praise the Lord in our hearts. For all that he has done, let us pray. First, merciful Father, we thank you this morning for what your word, your true word has said unto us, Lord God. We come to praise you. We come to lift you up. We come to worship you. Hallelujah. Because you have blessed us. You have kept us. You are continuing to move. You're continuing to work on our lives. We thank you right now for you are the rock of our salvation. We thank you today for we stand upon you. We stand upon you this morning. Our hope is in all that you are. We trust in your integrity because you're a God that can never fail. You are a keeper. Your words say you'll keep that which we commit. Lord, we stand, Lord God, just glorifying you with one voice and one mouth, Lord God. We thank you this morning. We thank you this morning for all the many, many blessings that you continue to, to give unto us, Lord God. Undeserving as we are, you love us. We thank you today, Lord God, for the promises. We thank you today for one day being with you, Lord God. Oh, Father God, we are going to stay focused on that. Even in the times we're in right now, we're going to stay focused upon all that you are. Stay focused upon your love. Stay focused upon your joy. Stay focused upon your call, Lord God. For well, you have called us with a great and, and holy calling, Father God. We want to walk worthy of that calling. We want to be steadfast, unmovable, continue to abound in your work, Lord God, doing the things that you have declared for us, Lord God. Lord, we thank you today, Lord God, for those that you're going to save. We thank you for those that you're going to heal, Lord God. We thank you for restoration this morning, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for touching the bereaved, Lord God, touching the lonely, Lord God. We know that you're a lifter, lifter of the head, Lord God. We praise you today, Lord God, for your spirit that's, that's lifting even at this moment, lifting the spirits, Lord God, of your people. Oh, Father God, moving away all doubt, Lord God, moving away all discouragement, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, we praise you this morning for being our hope because you're a God that is faithful, faithful. The Bible says that you're faithful and that we should trust and stand up on your faithfulness this morning. Oh, we thank you today. We thank you. We glorify you right now in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen, amen. Praise God. We thank God this morning. Thank God for all of you. Praise the Lord that are listening this morning. 
We just want to open up the word for a little while and look at what thus says the Lord and, and rejoice in his word. The Bible says to us in Hebrews 10 and 22, said, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. It says in the 23rd verse, said, let us hold fast the profession of our faith, the confession of our faith without wavering. He says, for he is faithful that promise. God is a faithful God. Let us hold fast to the promises. Let us hold fast to who God is and hold fast to his love and his mercy. Praise God, knowing that all things are in his hands this morning. We've got to be people that are continuing to move in what God has called us to do. Praise God. We said uh, earlier this year that this is our can-do season. We can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. We want to do more for God. Hallelujah. Asking God, what is your will? What is your desire for my life? Understanding that we are people that are victorious and successful. Everything that we need, the Bible says, is in Christ. All our victory is in him. He's a supplier. And we talked about this on Tuesday. That he's able to supply, that God will supply all our needs through our riches that are in Christ Jesus. Praise God. In, in, in Philippians 4, he said he'll supply it. Victory is in him. Everything that we need is in him. So we got to be confident in him and hold fast because the things of God, listen to me, the things of God are unlimited. The world cannot stop the things of God. The world cannot hold back the things of God. Praise the Lord. We don't have to wait for decisions to be made in Congress and the, and the White House and for men to, to vote and do all these things. Hallelujah. The Bible says the prayer of the righteous. Listen to me this morning. The prayer of the righteous availeth much, praise God. So we have to keep in mind, Lord, I'm going to do what you call me to do. I got to set my spiritual, I got to set, set my spiritual climate. Hallelujah. That I'm going to walk in you, that I'm going to live in you. I'm going to look unto you, praise God, because I understand this morning that you're the author and the finisher of all things, praise God. So I'm going to, I'm going to set myself spiritually. Remember I said, uh, being, staying consecrated in the things of God. You know, this ain't just going in the room and just shutting yourself up. Praise the Lord. Consecration is something that, that we have to walk and live in. Praise the Lord. God, keep me. Keep me in these times. Keep me, Lord God, in the trouble and the situations that, that may come up on my life. Praise the Lord. Because being a person with the assignment that we have, burdens are going to come. It comes at a cost. Praise God. It comes at a cost. And we have to understand that. Jesus had said in St. John 16, and 33, praise the Lord, that you go, the, the trouble's going to come. He told his disciples that they were going to that they were gonna have to deal with trouble. But look what he said in St. John 16 and 33. <clears throat> he says to us here, he says, these things I've spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. He said, where, where's your peace? He said, your peace has to be where? In him. He said, I'm, I, things I've spoken to you that you might have peace, where? In me. He said, you, met, you need to grab that right there. That you might have peace. Where's your peace? In him. He said, in the world you shall have. What? Tribulation. In the world, there's gonna, trouble's going to come. We're going to have to deal with circumstances, situations, praise the Lord. Just because we got to say don't mean everything went away, praise the Lord. Isn't that right? That we're living in fairyland. We're going to have a tribulation. And as you stand for God, as you speak for God, hallelujah, and you begin to take territory for the Lord, you got to expect trouble to come. The enemy's not going to just lay down and allow you just to come in and do it. Hallelujah. That's why you got to fight the good fight of faith. You got to lay hold on things that are eternal. He said, you're going to have tribulation. Jesus is saying, it. Jesus said, you're going to have tribulation. But I love what he says right here. He said, but be, he said, but be of good cheer. He said, because I have overcome the world. Regardless of what happens, regardless of what goes on, you know what he's saying? He said, I've overcome the world. The victory is already yours. I've already won the battle. But he's saying for us to be of good cheer. Let him be our peace. Let our hope be in him, praise the Lord, that nothing move us away from the power, nothing move us away from the authority of God. I, I said before, that's what, just like what Paul has said in Romans 8, he says in Romans 8, 31, he said, what shall we say then? To these things, if God be for us, who can be against us? He said, if God be for who? God be for who? God be for us. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. 
how shall he not with him, who with who, with Jesus, with him also freely give us what? All things. Mm. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. He said, God, he said, the Lord can give us all things through him. Isn't that wonderful? Grab this this morning. Get excited about God. Rejoice about the things of God this morning. I know we're looking at a lot of death and misery all on the TV and things are happening all around us, but, but we've got to continue to, to, to hold on to the joy of the Lord. We've got to tell the world, hallelujah, that my God is able to keep your, keep the, keep your commitment to him. You've got to stand in him. But like I said before, we got to set our spiritual climate because whatever you obey, you will worship. And whatever you what whatever thing come thing that you're leaning upon the most, that's what you're gonna follow. That's why we have to set our spiritual climate and stand in the things of God, hallelujah, and say, Lord, I know that you can keep me. Look at Romans right quick, Romans the sixth chapter. Let's set our spiritual climate. Romans six and sixteen. It says, <clears throat> excuse me. It says, know ye not that to whom ye, ye uh, yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. And so whoever you obey, that's, who, that's what you're going to serve. That's why I say your spiritual climate got to be set in the things of God. He said, but God be thanked. He said, thank that ye were the servants. All of us were the servants of what? Of sin. And I don't care how long you've been in the church. I don't care what position of, uh, they've given you or what they call you. Uh, Romans, Romans says, Romans 3 and 23 said, we all have sinned and all have come short of the glory of God. Even before he gets in that, he says, he said, he said, there's none good but one. So we all have sinned. We all have come short of the glory of God. My, my years in the Lord don't make me better than anybody else. I am still a sinner that have been saved by the grace of God. Hallelujah. I understand that. And so he said, but that's why I'm, I'm going to be thankful to God that ye were the servants of sin. We what? We serve sin. Serve sin. But ye have obeyed from what? He said, where, where does obedience have to be? Look at the scripture here. Romans 6 and 17. He said, obedience has to come from what? The heart. He said, that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you, he said, you got to obey God and your obedience to God has to come from what? From the heart. It has to come from the heart. It doesn't come from me running to church, uh, me listening to some, some spiritual music, uh, me doing, me reading the Bible once in a while. My obedience comes from the heart. So that means if I don't have the music, if, if I don't have the word, if I don't have all these things, it's in my heart. What did David say? Put it in my heart. Put it in me, in me. This is my life. This is my life. That's why if your spiritual climate is set in worshiping God. It becomes your life. And as and as I serve God and I worship God and I get closer to God, the greatness of your, your purpose will be unveiled. God will begin to show you your purpose. God will begin to show you who he is. God just don't give his stuff to, to anybody and everybody. Hallelujah. You. That's why I say we are called. That's a summons. And he's going to give it to you, praise God, as long as we're saying, I want to be a servant of yours, Lord God. That's why, that's why we can't allow things to come in and block us spiritually. This is, about a, this is a spiritual life. It's a spiritual warfare. The Bible says that we're fighting a spiritual enemy. Look at Ephesians right quick. He said we're fighting what? A spiritual enemy. You've heard it before. We're fighting a spiritual enemy. Maybe some of you haven't. But if you haven't, you're going to hear it this morning. We're fighting a spiritual enemy. And we have to stand against the spiritual enemy. Paul said this to the, to, uh, in the book of Ephesians, but he was talking to the elders that were in Ephesus because they were dealing with, with, with the, 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 the demonic forces, the demonic powers that were in the, in the city of Ephesus at that time. It was a worship of, of, of Diana, praise God. And, and, and Paul, uh, God was using Paul there. If you look at Acts 19 chapter, you see it, he was using Paul. And Paul was doing great works there, praise God. But the enemy was angry. The people, and he angered the people. So Paul was encouraging the elders there, and he says in Ephesians 6 and 10, he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in what? The Lord. And in the power of his might. And look what he tells us. I can't set my spiritual climate if I don't put on the whole armor of God. I got to put on the whole armor of God. That's just like, 
I got to be dressed right. If I go out here in the wintertime, half dressed, in a, it, 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 it's, it's five degrees outside, and I'm walking around in a T-shirt and some shorts and some, and some sandals, I'm asking for trouble. I'm going to I have to dress myself right because of the climate, because of the things that's happening. He says here, you got to, he said, if you're going to stand in these days, in these times, he said, you got to put on the whole arm of God. He said, put on the whole arm of God. He said, put the whole arm on that you may be able to what? Be able, because the, the arm is going to give you the ability to stand against the wiles, the, the cunning, the craftiness of Satan. Look what he says in 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He's, he's trying to, he said, let's take the fight to where it needs to be taken. He said, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. The enemy would love to keep us there, but this is not a flesh and blood battle. But as, as God, as you set in your spiritual climate and as you're moving away spiritual blockers and getting things out of the way, praise God, that you can begin to see God in a greater way. And you got a desire and a hunger to get closer to God. And, and, and you saying, I'm standing on him and I want God to consecrate me and, and, and do the things in my life purge me and do things. He says, listen, he said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this, what? Of this world. Spiritual wickedness, he said, that's in high places. Spiritual wickedness that's in places of authority. He said, but you got to put on what? The whole armor. He says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. He put it on, take it unto you, that ye may be able to withstand. You got to do it. You got to withstand. You got to withstand the onslaught. You got to withstand the charge of the enemy. You got to withstand the things that, uh, that, 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 that might try to come against you. You got to withstand it. And you gotta, you gotta fight and stand in those things. And you gotta look into God to be your peace. And you gotta look into him. To, Jesus, remember he said, he said, you're gonna go through some persecution. You're gonna trouble, you're gonna go through some tribulation. He said, but look, I'm with you. He said, I've already overcome the world. I've overcome the things that you're dealing with right now, but you got to trust me. Because this thing is not gonna stop you from being what I want you to be. It's not going to stop you from, praise God, from inheriting the promises. Because whatever God has said, understand something, you can stand on his promise. I said a few minutes ago in Hebrews, he that promise is faithful. Now, you know what? You know what? We got to believe that. He said, we got to withstand. This is where a lot of people fall because they don't withstand. We got to withstand in the evil day. He said, you got to withstand in that evil day, in that evil time. Hallelujah. You got to stand against the things that, that, that's going to come, and come against you. He said, we got to withstand in the evil day. Baby, we are in evil times. And he said, having done all to stand. What? I'm doing everything, everything to stand in God. I'm going to humble myself into his mighty hand. I'm going to ask God to give me the things that I need to stand in these times. I'm going to cast off all things that are not like you. See, when we begin to move those things that block us spiritually, listen to me, it, it, it brings more intimacy. It brings more love, praise God. We get closer to God when we move those things, praise the Lord. They're stopping us from growing, when they're stopping us from getting closer to God. Isn't that right? When we, when we move those things, praise God, those spiritual blockers, it brings a, a greater degree of joy and peace. Because then we begin to really understand the joy of the Lord is my strength. I begin to be able to understand I'm going to rejoice in him regardless of what's happening, regardless of what's going on. I'm going to still lift him up. I'm going to still be encouraged. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The word of God and prayer becomes a priority. When we remove the spiritual blockers, number one, I said, it brings more intimacy, more love. Number two, it brings a greater degree of joy and peace. Number three, the word of God and prayer becomes a priority. It becomes what? A priority. It becomes a priority. This is what I do. This is my desire. I'm not going to run to God because of the situations and things that's happening right now. Because people will run, run to the church and run to this and run to that uh, in God because of fear. Or, uh, and, and once the fear moves, people are right back to doing everything they were doing before. I've seen it over the years. 
how people can run the church and want to be in the church and want to do things and all this kind of stuff because something may have happened in their life but they really didn't make a choice to really live for him and make a choice to really serve him. Listen, God wants to be served. God wants to be worshiped. God wants to be praised. Hallelujah. And if it ain't in your heart and mind to do that, you're wasting your time. If it's not in your heart and mind to say, I'm gonna give myself unto him. I'm gonna be that living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. He said, this is my reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world because we just read about the things of the world, the system of Satan, the secular world. He said, he said, do we, be not conformed, Romans, that's Romans, Romans 12, 1 and 2, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, here we go, by the renewing. I want to, I, I got to, I got to serve God in a new mind. I got to serve God in a new spirit, the renewing of my mind. God wants to renew your mind. Hallelujah, he wants to renew your spirit, your heart. And so when I do this, praise God, then things that come against me that are not of him, I want to move them out the way. Because my inti intimacy with God means more to me than anything else. This love affair that I have with God means more to me than anything else. I want, I want my joy to be full because my joy can only be full in you and Lord. And I want to rejoice in you. That's why he says, you got to, don't be conformed, but be transformed. Look at 1 John 2. Right quick, 2 and 15, and he, look what he says. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. He said, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Right now, we're looking at a time where people can't have peace because they're so busy trying to do the things of the world. We want to get back to normal. And listen to me. Somebody might get angry because I say this, but most of the normal that everybody's talking about doing is sin. Let's get back to the normal. Missing all this, missing all that, because we, our peace has been set up in those things. Those things become our peace. Those things have become our joy. Just doing this and doing that, praise God, because we are not living and moving in the joy of the Lord. And so people can't, people are just restless and, and walking around, don't know what to do. And I'm just so bored. And, and I don't even know how to, how to be at home with my kids. And, and I don't know what to do with my children. That's, that's sad. Because I'm so busy, it's all, it's been about me. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to be, be truthful with you that our peace is not in him. Our peace is in stuff. When our peace becomes, but peace is in basketball and football and all this kind of stuff, we're in trouble. Going to the mall and spending money, we're in trouble. That's why he says, love not the world, neither things of the world. He says, because if, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What? The love of God is not in him. When he loves those things more than God, I'm not saying, you don't, you, don't, you can't do those things. You don't have those things, praise God, television, things of this nature. But when you love that, more than you love God, you desire that. More than you love God, the people of God should, should at this time should definitely should be saying, "Lord, get, give me a, give me a, a space to get stronger in you. Move away all those things that's been blocking me spiritually. Let me get about my assignment. Let me be. You know what God has called us all to be witnesses. God didn't just call me to be a pastor. God called me to be a witness. He said, after I receive power, I should become His witness. Every one of us." Every one of us, if we, if we are filled with his spirit this morning, we have been called to be a witness. You may not know every Bible scripture, hallelujah, but you, can, but you should be able to talk about the goodness of God. You should be able to talk about the love of God. And even if people, you, you, you can't, people don't understand everything you're saying, but you're still declaring his love. You're still declaring his mercy. It's time out for foolishness. He says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. First John 2 and 17, look what he says is going to happen. The world passes away. Hmm. That means that this stuff ain't going to last forever. It passes away. It's not eternal that's why he said, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on things that are eternal. This stuff is not eternal. Things pass away. And the lust thereof. But, but, but he that doeth the will of God. He that what? He that doeth the will of God. Are you getting this? What's the most important thing for me this morning? To be about God's business. 
to be doing the will of God. Where's his will at in his word? Where's his will at in his spirit? He's going to tell me his will. He's going to lead me and guide me into all truth. He said, the most important thing that should be on my mind this morning is doing his will. Doing his will helps me to be a better wife, better, helps you be a better wife, helps you be a better husband, helps you be a, just a better person all the way around, but helps you be a better young person. Hallelujah. When you begin to do the will of God, there's a battle out here, baby. And it ain't just coronavirus. There's a battle out here where Satan is trying to destroy you. Well, Satan is trying to destroy mankind. The Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But let me tell you something, saints of God, people of God. God has said, I want to give you the power. I'm going to give you the authority to stand in these times. We got to be willing to stand in these times. I said, you got to set your spiritual climate. In these times, we need to be hearing and seeing God clearly. You can't. If a whole lot of stuff is put, in your, put before your focus. And an enemy will do that. He'll put things before you to try to stop you from really seeing God clearly. I remember some years back, I had a, what they call a cataract surgery. And I didn't even understand how much that, 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 was, that, that cataract was blocking my, my vision until the doctor removed it. When the doctor removed it and the bandages and everything finally came off, I could see so much better. I can see so much clear. We got to let God woo those cataracts off our eyes that we can see him. David said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hmm? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Listen, I told you, whenever you obey, that's, whenever you, you obey, that's what you worship. It's time now to say, God, here I am. I'm giving you all of me. If you've done it, good. Keep on doing it because we want to move in his power and his authority. His power and his authority. That's what I want to stand on this morning. That's what I'm holding fast to this morning. Hallelujah. Let's meditate upon him. Hmm? Let's meditate upon him. Let's get closer to him. Let's have a mind to say, Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to meditate upon your truth and upon your word. I'm going to stand on all that you are. I need you to hide it in my heart that I can tell others. About your, about, your, about your mercy, about your goodness. Praise God that I, that I, can, that I can be who you're calling for in these last times. Hmm? These last days are last days, saints. Hmm? These are last days. So let's continue to say, Lord, you are good. You are good and worthy to be praised. Oh, we thank God this morning. I thank God this morning. I'm hoping you're thankful too. And I hope something I've said has helped you this morning. Praise the Lord. Not trying to fuss anything like that. I just want people to understand the love and power of God and how much God wants us to make it. But don't nobody want you to make it? God do. But don't nobody wants you to be successful? Listen to me. God does. Hallelujah. The world didn't care about my success. And I didn't even know that. But God does. And I thank you, Lord, for blessing in this time. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you this morning. Truly thank you for being who you are today. We thank you for the victory that we have in you. Our heart and our mind is going to be upon your will and way, Lord God. Let us set our spiritual awareness and, and mindset upon you, our climate upon you, Lord God, as you continue to move in your people. Oh, Father God, open up our hearts and minds to dreams and visions, Lord God. Let us see you in a greater way. Let us understand our purpose in the earth, Lord God. You said we, you have overcome the world. That's letting us know right now we're, we're victorious. We're victorious in you. Save, touch. Right now, in the name of Jesus, touch those that are bereaved. I've lost loved ones, Lord. Encourage them today. Lord, we thank you today. And we give you the praise. We give you the honor. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name.